All right, well, good morning. It is uh, Wednesday, what is it, the 22nd? That sounds right. I think that's right. And uh, this is the maiden voyage of uh, maiden voyage of Hooked on Drupal. Uh, we're here with uh, Brad Chizunsosunsky, is that right? That's correct, yes. And Chris Keller. Yes. Uh, I've already uh, spent a little bit of time interviewing Chris, and so we have some of his biographical data. But Brad, if you could tell me a little bit about um, how a librarian becomes a Drupal developer, I'd like to know. Sure. Um, well, I mean, first, in order to become a Drupal developer from being a librarian, you have to become a librarian first. And uh, so back when in my undergrad as an econ major, uh, I had to take a three credit class to fulfill a scholarship requirement uh, during the summer and there weren't a lot of three credit classes available except that um, LIS 6010 introduction to the library profession was <laughs> one of them so I took that and the professor uh, got me hook line and sinker and a few years later I was a librarian and in that profession um, it's kind of stereotypically male to either go into management or go into IT and so I ended up in the tech side of things and uh, uh, there was a call for a, a on-site developer for Canton Public Library, and so I was doing full-time Drupal development as a librarian at a library, and that just sort of morphed into doing all sorts of different Drupal sites. All right, so you came in more from the information management technology side of things. Chris, you were a straight-up PHP developer. Was your gateway drug? Or yeah, no? I wouldn't call myself a PHP developer. I had done a couple things with PHP Chris a couple is very of humble. times. We've already covered yeah. the Nick Cage module. It does exist. <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, so, so PHP path, um, Brad. You did you did uh, management, but didn't like the TPS report. So you're like, okay, let's just go straight IT uh, route through library land. Uh, I, I don't think that I would be a very good manager. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I've heard about the developer exploits. Tell me a little bit about what you've done to prepare for this podcast. Uh, there's some setup behind the scenes on Drupal, right? Sure. Uh, so uh, here in-house, we do everything using features. So if we're deploying a new, um, uh, th new feature to a site, um, it's a combination of a content type and a view. And so we built out a content type that you can attach audio and metadata to and then a view using uh, Views RSS and Views RSS iTunes. And uh, putting all that together creates a feed and a, a page that shows all the podcast episodes. So a uh, real quick thing to kind of throw together, you can, um, once you get a hang of the Views RSS module and the way that it deals with fields, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah, I saw the prototype that you put together. Um, you know, pretty much in an afternoon, it, it looked like it or less. Um, and you know, basically, uh, I saw a blog view with a player, but behind the scenes, you hooked it up so this thing is ready to go for a podcast submission to iTunes, right? That's right. Yeah. So I mean, pretty cool, and I think that's kind of a demonstration of the capacity here. Like any problem that's thrown at Drupal, we figure it out, right? I mean, that's pretty much how it works. Yeah. This is one of those rare ones where uh, it entirely works without having to write anything. <laughs> yeah, that's not usually the case. <laughs> right, so, I mean, whatever it is that you're uh, developing, it has to work all the way. The magic checkbox, you know, that actually makes the thing work is, um, you know, that's pretty important stuff. Um, so eventually this, this podcast will be on iTunes. Uh, is there any other services that you're thinking about hooking it into or initially that's the one? Uh, that's a, that's a Shane question. I'll throw yeah. that right back at you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen like other stuff out there, like, you know, like SoundCloud and stuff like that. And that seems to be pretty popular for, you know, for pushing media. I just, you know, everything has like all these other channels that you want to connect to. Um, right. But is there a generic RSS feed as well as the iTunes specific one? Well, the iTunes uh, RSS feed has um, specific tags, so it's um, a fully um, RSS compliant thing. It's okay. got the all the stuff for okay. it, so you could subscribe to it in Feedly or in, in a, any aggregator if you really want to. 
All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll play around with that and put together a few links of uh, places that this ends up. Um, so we started talking a little bit about uh, Drupal in the news. Uh, this last week, uh, you guys were pretty busy Friday applying some patches. Uh, I don't think uh, the current security release, does it have like a code name? Uh, do they call it anything? Um, does it have a heinous code name? I mean, I don't you know, think so. I mean, they're probably like scared to call it. Or, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, heart, yeah, I don't have a cool name like that. Yeah, I know. How, I mean, how do you, you know, come up with a, a patch that's cool enough to get, you know, named after a tropical storm or something? Well, I think what, like, I think with Shell Shock, they made the name Shell Shock before the it even went public. Like they bought, like, because when when Hartley <laughs> they came out, it. yeah. Because when Heartbleed came out, it was so quickly that somebody came up with the name Heartbleed. And went with it. So really what we need to do is sit here and just come up with a name. Okay, so and this is the conspiracy theorist portion of the show. Uh -huh. I mean, do you think they came up with the branding ahead of time? They're like, we need a vulnerability for shell shock. What do you guys got? I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that's how it works? I don't know. If there's I've that. never come up with a vulnerability you've, name. You've never yeah. invented so, a vulnerability yeah. name. Well, I mean, who knows how, you know, the scary underworld of the Internet works. I mean, <laughs> we're pretty much on the up and up and fixing all the problems that the bad guys uh, uh, poke holes in. But, I mean, this was one that, uh, I mean, everyone has to plug this, like, right away. Yeah, it's important. We saw a lot of compromised sites, like, the day after it was announced, which is pretty rare. For Drupal vulnerability. Quick, yeah. yeah, and what's typical, like, I know a lot of times in development, if you have a stable deployment, like, you want to test it first with your whole system and make sure that, you know, if you apply this patch, it's not going to break anything. Sure. I mean, how does this one roll out? Um, it was, this one changed one line in one file, so um, it didn't require too much testing. Yeah. It was uh, pretty easy to apply. And conceivably, it, it could have broken some contrib code if somebody had done, well, I'm kind of just guessing here, but um, if somebody had uh, created a query in a way that the key was important, um, sure. that could have caused an issue, but I don't think that anybody's really observed that in the wild, so it just was a straightforward thing. Yeah, so go ahead and apply, and then be safe. Yeah. And don't, don't worry about it too much. All right. Uh, well, in, in other news, um, maybe I'd, I'd like to go down the path, uh, and we can hit this up again later, but tell me a little bit about your expectations for, for Drupal 8 or how you're thinking about it, how you're approaching it. Um, you know, is it still a Drupal 7 development world for the next year? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I try to, like, once a week watch a tutorial or read something about Drupal 8 so that I can be at least mildly prepared when, when sure. it releases. And it's still going to take a while for us to probably start building sites with it after it's released. I read a little bit that, I mean, they were saying this is kind of, it's not just a feature augmentation. This has some rebuild to it. Is that true? Yeah, very much so. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of times on the weekly drop and stuff, you'll see... Um, where somebody will draw a parallel to how you do something in Drupal 7 compared to how you do it in Drupal 8. And, like, with blocks, I, like, I have such consternation about it. It's just, like, uh, you have to build out this directory structure and build out a plugin and all this other stuff. And in Drupal 7, if you want to make a block, it's, like, two functions, and you know exactly what's going on. And um, So I can see how it, uh, it immensely builds out the learning curve for somebody who... Um, isn't really familiar with the um, like the Symphony framework or for, with object oriented uh, uh, PHP in general, uh, but it's something we'll have to learn because it adds quite a bit of power to, to things. Yeah, and you mentioned the Symphony. Is that is that a new addition in eight or is that something? Okay. So, and a lot of Drupal developers may have never had to dabble <clears throat> with it before. Right, yeah, there wasn't much of a reason if you only did Drupal to ever mess with Symfony, I guess. Um, but it does allow like a lot of other PHP developers that develop Symfony now to come into the Drupal world. Okay. Yeah, it's so, a lot of standard stuff. So uh, the Symfony world is based in a lot of uh, the uh, 
the specs that, that the PHP community has set out for how to develop things, uh, whereas um, being something of a legacy application, um, going from Drupal, like the original Drupal up to, to now, it's kind of just been like an evolutionary process. Mm. Whereas if you were to write from scratch a CMS in PHP using those standards, it would look very differently. So it's kind of morphing uh, this legacy application into a, a modern PHP application. So yeah, what do you what do you think is is pushing that? Is it um, it's it's more of a standardization move um, to bring Drupal closer aligned to to, to Symphony or? Well, it lends that air of respectability, and um, it brings. Uh, other communities that wouldn't necessarily be involved in Drupal in, um, like on on the on the developer side of things. So that, I mean, they're all positive moves. Yeah. Okay. So have you seen anything that, um, you know, lo looking at the the changes, you're you're like, well, that you know, going forward, when I when I create a site, this for me is going to be a, a a very different way. I already see how I'm going to change my approach. Um. I like the uh, the twig templating system mm -hmm. is really cool. There won't be any more uh, just when we inherit a site we won't <laughs> see just tons of PHP and template files because that's not really allowed. Well we say that now. Well but maybe it is allowed. It I don't out. know. But you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I'm looking forward to the twig thing a lot for theming. And, okay. And the configuration management um, uh, changes so um, right now, like I said earlier, we use the features module to implement new stuff onto on the sites with Drupal eight. All of that's kind of baked into the core, um, and it uses um, uh, YAML files to just save all the configuration information. So we're gonna have to change up our workflow, but it uh, it will yield some pretty interesting. Yeah, it's for benefits. the better, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, very good. Um, yeah, so I want to keep tabs on that and just see where, where Drupal 8 is coming as it... I mean, it's in beta now, is that right? It is officially in beta, yeah. Yeah, as of pretty recent? A couple couple weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. So what, what do you think uh, expectations for, you know, the first site that you could imagine launching? Is it still a year away in Drupal 8? It kind of depends on how complicated the site is. If it's fairly standard brochure site, then I think we could... We could probably make it now, yeah. but um, <laughs> right. we'll probably hold off until it's actually released. That's cool. Alex has closed his door. We want to build the commercial progression <laughs> site using Drupal 8. We That's do true. It, like, we want now. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, why not use ourselves as guinea pigs? I yeah. Mean, you know, I mean, what could go See how on? it goes. Yeah, right. right. It's just yeah. our business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the community would really respect that, uh, that self-sacrifice. <laughs> um, so, in other news... Um, uh, my big contribution to commercial progression so far has been the chicken pot pie uh, uh, crock pot it recipe. It's pretty good. It has the best crock pot Thursday ever. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I was looking to hear. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh -huh. uh, there will be a recipe attached uh, to this podcast. Um, nice. And I'm starting to get up to speed with the culture here. I mean, th that's a very important weekly communal event that happens at commercial progression that... Um, yeah, I'm just I'm really glad that I was able to bring something to the table that was well received. I mean, I I think that may have been the fastest turnaround for somebody starting to somebody doing a crowd pot. <clears throat> yeah, it has to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was like a a weekend, right? And you're like, I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of felt like that was the bullet I had to bite. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was, yeah. You win. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for uh, for eating the chicken pot pie and enjoying it. And, and I'm also glad that it didn't kill our uh, uh, our, our president and CEO, uh, who has an extreme dairy uh, yeah. allergy. And what did you, can you give out your secret here on the Again, it, it'll be in the details, but okay. it did involve uh, this special butter that has a name that makes it sound like it's made out of like uh, wood grain or something like that, but it, that seemed to that seemed to fit the bill. Um, and, and I know Brad, you you initiated the chicken pot pie or no the the crock pot Thursdays. Uh, yeah, it was uh, like the week before I started. 
uh, we were just joking around. We went out to go get lunch. And first, uh, the first iteration of that was we were going to do a knife fight Thursday. Uh, <laughs> and that did not go well because yeah. we tried it the first Thursday. Yeah, and not so It good. didn't go so well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we were just like joking around and, and said like, uh, uh, oh yeah, we could do crock pot Thursday. I don't know the exact circumstances under which this, this came. Um, but yeah, I started the next week. And I think everybody had just kind of like gotten it out of their minds that this, this idea is not of crock happen. pot Thursday. <laughs> There's no way he's showing up with a crock so, yeah. pot. So yeah, so I just wa- walk in with a. Ter- it was a terrible crock pot, by the way. It was <laughs> I hadn't cooked it long enough. It was just awful. But uh, yeah, that somehow kept going. So <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm sorely disappointed that knife fight Thursday didn't. It didn't pan out because I mean that's something that I got down i mean i've been right. doing that for years yeah we I don't hire the, people that are good at knife fight thursday we yeah. like to hire people that are bad at knife right fight thursday and we, we kind of <laughs> had that vision of um, uh, michael jackson's beat it like Ooh, the yeah. like the tying the the wrist together mm-hmm. and both kind of right right deal yeah. yeah yeah that's also a bonding experience <laughs> I, that's I feel. team building yeah exactly yeah you yeah. know i mean some people line up that fall backwards and catch each other i mean i think the knife fight is uh yeah that's that's just as uh corporate synergizing <laughs> you know that's really good um so also brad uh in a recent meeting you did volunteer to present at the next michigan drupal meetup um, do you have any ideas what uh, the contents of that's going to be? Check, check. All right, we're back. Those of you who are watching the visual version of the podcast will notice that we all have coffees magically now, which is... Um, I was going to take my jacket off, but I thought continuity was important. Throw everyone off. Good. Uh, yeah. No, it's very high production values in that regard. Um, so, Brad, you were just getting ready to... to to tell us that you did not have a presentation ready for the next Michigan Drupal meeting. Is that right? Uh, not presently. I've got a few ideas, though. Um, so uh, any of them are, are total whiz-bang, totally <laughs> worth coming to see uh, uh, topics. Um, some of the, um, the field work, like literally fields in Drupal, uh, uh, some... I think I can put some things together that would be uh, pretty useful in, in that regard. Um, I d- had just sent a thing. I thought that this isn't worth having a blog post for, but it would definitely be uh, some fodder for uh, um, for uh, people in the room being like, "Hey, do you guys make fields all the time? Check this out. It it it'll save you five minutes every time that you do it because um, it's the way that you." Uh, create a settings form and you create like a little summary display um, those sorts of things can kind of be automated and uh, it sort of occurred to me the last time I was doing it because I become quite uh, frustrated with having to do that every single time so if you don't come to the Michigan Drupal meetup you may or may not get this great information which could not be in a blog post he's already decided that yeah. <laughs> It's not going into a blog. It, it's, it's not worthy not of a blog. Blocked. Yeah, you know. I mean, I disagree that it everything feels should be kind blogged. of blog worthy. Yeah. Okay, it, to be let's be fair. I'm going to blog. He's going to blog about uh, it. And Brad does do some regular blogging and commercial progression. There's it's a pretty, irregular. It's not. It's not normal. I've I've seen at least three posts. That's regular. No, it's but none, regular of, regular none of them are very normal posts. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah the ab, that. abnormal posting does <laughs> does occur. It happens normally. Yeah. It, yeah. Regular yeah, regular intervals. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, the other topic might be if I if I get a lot of the web form quiz stuff done, it it'll be a viable alternative to the quiz module, which I can go into great lengths as to why I did not use that on a on a client site. So um, that could be a fun little thing to go over. Well, and with that, we're we're running short on time here. Okay. Next time the quiz module um we're going to put that in the uh, up and coming hot items to look for in round two of what's the name of our podcast again <laughs> hooked on drupal hooked on, hooked on drupal yeah, is there that's a p- the name particular of it. uh where do we need to um put our accent mark on that is it hooked on hooked? There, might, there might be one umlaut but it might be on the <laughs> e in hooked i don't know <laughs> on Drupal. Um, and then we did uh, allude to a, a special project uh, 
we're, do we have a code name for the special project that we're going to reveal uh, in December? And this is something yeah, we that... Need, we need, to, co we need to, to be methodical about the code names. First, we come up with a code name for the exploit that came out last week. Right. And then we can get to special project. We actually... Um, Chris and I have, I have a code yeah we have a code name that we could use for one of these yeah Chris and I have a code naming scheme yeah. for things and it, it this is the way that it works it's the word operation and then um, some sort of dirtiness and then the name of a large jungle cat yeah <laughs> so like operation rusty lion Ooh, or for op example yeah, opera operation patina leopard like these are the sort of things that you could. Wow. When you have a good structure like that, yeah, you can just works. come up with code names all day. Wow. You guys could, you're ma machines of c code name generation. Yeah. I, I'm uh, trying to figure out how to keep our audience in rapt attention <laughs> towards this uh, uh, this great feature that's going to, I mean, basically all we can say is that every developer that launches a website is going to, they're going to need this, right? They're at least going to want They're it. They're going to want it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you don't need it, but, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would almost it. say it's very unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, we've gone this long without amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right on. Okay. That'll bring them back. Yeah, yeah. It's unnecessary. <laughs> and with that, you have to come back to know about this mysterious thing that we speak of uh, that has to do with website launchings. And uh, with that, we're out till next time. We don't know when the next time is going to be, but probably every two weeks, I'm, I'm thinking, is what we're going to shoot for. I thought we were going to do daily. Oh, yeah. Oh, this isn't yeah. a daily thing. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just going to mic your rooms and then you know, take half hour oh. segments of typing. Okay. Well, if you want the feed, I've already got that set up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>